All right, thank you very much. Let's get this next one underway. Another game here in beautiful Texas. And these two teams have an awful lot to prove. There's been roller coasters, there's been dismay, but glory can await on the main stage. So let's say hello to our first team, the LA Gorillas. How they crushing any competition? Long range, yeah, I got the vision. When I'm in the trenches, anyone can get it. I'm with the team when they need me. Or out on a dolo mission. They get rocky riding on this road of riches. If I catch you slipping, then it's over finished. War, ready, crew, coming through heavy. Aim steady, place out of stick of fellas. Not any with a one out of many. Please welcome to the stage, the L.A. Gorillas! Assault, Exceed, Jonas Steves and Arsenis. Your L.A. Gorillas. They are the massive underdogs in this series. But let's not forget, there's two world champs on this squad and a world champs MVP. This is a team coming in since they've looked better. The Cod Gods blessed them with the winner's bracket spot. Can they capitalize on it? Let's bring out Seattle, Bryce. <laughs> All right, four players are set, and four more want to take that win away from them. It's been a roller coaster for this next team, but let's find out how they are today. This is Seattle Surge. <laughs> Texas makes a noise for Seattle's surge. Sip, accuracy, Mac and Pred, your Seattle surge. With a star studded lineup, I'm going to focus on the underrated. Mac with the most clutches on this team, three aces on this season, and a 1.43 in search and destroy. That's going to be your player to watch when it comes to Seattle Surge. They're looking to get a chip again like they did last year for Major 3, and it's looking hot against the LAG. Let's get this match started, Bryce. All right, thank you very much, Ali. The teams are set and glory awaits in the next round. Let's get this game underway. Over to our casters, Lando and Study. Thank you so much, Bryce. Yes, indeed, Jay. And start, it's really time for us to start off our Major 3 tournament in the best way possible. Number one versus our number eight seed. Tell you what, man, oftentimes when you're taking a look at the seeds, you know, taking a look at the position for how both teams play the qualifiers, it's it's easy to almost like not really notice a trend. But I'll tell you what, man, coming into Major 3, we did not know what to expect from both of these rosters considering how they played at Boston. Oh, yeah. You're talking about Seattle Surge, man. They get last place at that Boston Major, and it simply came down to their search and destroy. Now, all throughout this stage, though, they have completely turned the tide in that mode. Go 4 and 1 overall. And the majority of that success falls on the Embassy Search and Destroy, falls on the whole Hotel where they do have that embassy in this series as that map number two. So everything tells you Seattle are going to come out and win this series. They're way better when it comes to the hard points. Their SD has been looking a lot better. And then they have that fortress control in the middle. They are the best attacking team on that map. So tall ladder to climb for LAG. I think for me, it all starts at this map number one, man. A team who started off with this roster, they were great at hard point. They yeah. kind of fell off all throughout stage three. That's the way that they have to try to come out into the series, is stealing a respawn versus a team like Seattle. Absolutely. As we take a look at our season of records for both the LA Gorillas and the Seattle Surge, it's, it's interesting, right? Because we're talking about that search destroy. Obviously, on the season for Seattle, does not look good. The number 12 seed overall, 8 and 19 so far throughout this season, yet it feels like that is the brightest spot right now for the team, Jay. Oh, yeah, without question, man, because this is the thing that was holding them back. 
They were obviously almost on the verge of breaking that loss record in search and destroy with right 12 in a row. They do that. And then eventually they come out and start winning their search and destroys. Man, their respawn has always been stellar, but that's what's going to make this team complete. They can stay in that prime form. You talk about that S and D, but like I said, this embassy map number one, a stellar one for both of these squads. I know the record says four and one for LG, but with this new squad, they're actually undefeated. So this is a map that they have to come on and win. Absolutely, as we said, coming into this series, LAG, massive underdogs. But when it comes down to major time, we've seen some wild upsets previously here at the Esports Stadium in Arlington. Can we be delivered another one? It's time for P1 here on Embassy as both teams look to battle, not just for the time, but more importantly, for the bottom side of the map. And right now, Seattle, they've got their arrows everywhere. Yeah, Seattle's doing a great job of maintaining the better side of the map. Neither squad is fighting for a majority of this P1 time. It's right now, Seattle and Accuracy holding down this lane from top papers. Cutting them all down, great shots at least, fine too. That relieves some of the pressure, so Seattle able to find a couple kills, get right back on that time. And it's interesting, man, we see Accuracy start off great. I mean, really, for Surge, this has been a wonderfully played P1 up to this point. Now they've got preferred positioning for P2. As we take a look through the battles, it feels like it's been a collective effort across the board. There's always a lot of focus, you know, thrown toward Accuracy and Mac. but Jay, the Death touched on it. They have both had their moments so far. Oh yeah, they have stepped up tremendously. We talk about their play in Stage 3. And that's what has led to them having a lot of success. When you see the early break comes in from the Gorillas. They take full kitchen control. They're able to find a couple kills. And now Seattle Surge is wanting all the way across the map. They're trying to find an opening, but oh. LAG are cutting them all down okay. until Max finds two, hits the Dolphin Dive, cannot find a third, but it turns into a one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, and it's Brad who's picking up right from where McKenzie leaves off. Assault, still 30 seconds left to fight for. Seattle are right back into this HP as they've got close spawns. And right now for LAG, it is Arsty's thinking about that rotation. Understandably so. It's going to be Seattle who walks away with the scraps, but now comes in the most important part of Embassy J, these next two hard points. Yeah, these next two hard points, the P3 to P4 chain. It's where this game starts to get out of hand. That's going to be Joe Deceives holding down that orange cut. He's able to find two assault with the third. So LAG win their gunfights off the rotation. They're going to be able to get set up properly for top AC. But you see Seattle Surge. They're putting a lot of pressure on towards back heads. They're trying to set up this crossfire as Max is setting up for the pitch. Yeah, every kill is going to be huge here. Assault ends up getting totally crossed inside of the office. And now <laughs> Seattle with numbers. There is three players making their way up the stairs. And Joe deceives, overwhelmed by the amount of players that he sees as Seattle right back in this HP. Oh man, they're just taking over this game. Perfect pinch leads to a perfect break as they're finding all the, the kills to feed. Assault up the ladder with the pistol. He does take down one, but there's too many players here from Seattle Surge. Able to get this remaining 20 seconds, and now it's all gonna be about this rotation. Accuracy the only player here, he drops, so if you are Seattle Surge, make sure you get this 15 seconds, but it's all gonna be about these next couple of gunfights. LAG have to get a good hold here. I think if you're a Gorillas fan, man, you're just taking a look at player number eight, specifically on the mini-map. The same thing can be said for Mac, but Pred, just in those close quarters, we now, rather, we know how elite he can be in close quarter gunfights, and that is exactly what the office will provide you with. Early time going the way of LAG is right now for Mac. We take a look through his perspective. Waiting for a lane, waiting for an opportunity, opens up the door, and we'll see if he can begin to strike. Pred, he's dealt with. Same thing for accuracy. Sib, able to find one, but that is all that Surge will get. First wave cleared from the Gorillas. That's a good hold right there from the Gorillas to get some much needed time to get back into this game. Now it's all about holding down the second oh. push, and Assault does it with that fast step in hand. He had a stellar performance all throughout stage three. So far leading the way right now for his squad on a five spree. So far, this hill's been uncontested. Oh. Seattle cannot find an opening. Oh. He's cutting them down, but at least he picks up that kill to earn that cruise missile. Off the rotation, though, it's going to be Seattle with a couple more bodies. It feels like lately, man, for the LA Gorillas, I mean, you and I have had quite a few of their casts so far throughout the Major 3 qualifiers. It almost feels like the team kind of goes based off of Assault's level of play. Like, we're seeing him pull out the SG from time to time. We've seen that happen on the previous embassy that they played. He had a stellar performance when it came down to that. As we said, the 2018 champs MVP and winner back in the CDL and trying to lead the Gorillas to a victory over our number one seed. As it's about to be all out chaos in P5, so far LAG have been able to handle that chaos lately. But it's Seattle's opportunity to break and they're able to make it happen big time left on the board. Big time. 
And now if you are LAG, you are getting those close spawns towards back kitchen. So you have the ability to set up the pinch, go for the flood, and win these engagements. It's all going to start with Arsene. He gets the first. The trade comes in. Joe deceives. They see trying to do everything to cut them down, but Sip at least release some of that pressure. So with only 15 seconds left, it's all going to be about setting up around this P1 hardpoint. Seattle, find the break for the final 10 seconds. As Pren is just cutting them down, but this has been a back and forth hardpoint. LAG did a great job of getting themselves back into this one. Yeah, absolutely. And the one thing that makes P5 even that much crazier, Jay, is that you also want to have spawns. So you're not just trying to fight throughout the entirety of the HP for the seconds, but you also want the spawns that it possesses you once that hill comes to a close, right now, LAG have that. But the first set of rotations, a 30-point game right now in favor of Seattle. We'll see if they can keep that same level of play up. As we said from the other side of the stage, Gorillas, they have yet to lose this hard point. And this is the one that, as we called it, is a huge lifeline for them, considering the s &D, considering just the talent that the Seattle team will have when it comes down to game number three. All eyes, all focus right now on the Gorillas, and more specifically on to exceed as he finds himself on the three sprint. And the Gorillas are doing a great job of getting a lot of time off of this P1. You saw Akins, who's the only player causing the problem from top paper, but once you take care of him, you're able to soak up a lot more time to get yourself closer and closer back into this game. But these next couple of gunfights are going to be big. Sib and Mac, they combine for two through the street side, so now Seattle have that side of the map. Ooh. LAG are now going to spawn over towards Orange. They found the break the last go around. They have to try to find it again. As Joe Deceives is going to be that player on the pinch trying to make the play. He just made the mega, mega route. Let's see if that works out. Meanwhile, for Assault, he'll look to bring in the streak. It doesn't really take him down, but thankfully, Joe Deceives' play ends up working out very well here for the Gorillas. So, currently vacant time. Both teams strategizing, trying to figure out where the others are coming from. It is Gorillas with preferred positioning, but Seattle, a quick three for one trade. Joey D, the only man here. He's the only one. He made such a great play for his team to get the better side of the map, to put themselves in the proper setup, but none of his team is able to pick up any kills. So the break is in for Seattle Surge. Final 20 is going to be theirs, and this is where you have to make up for it. If you are the Gorillas, they got broken instantly, rotating over towards this P3 hardpoint. It's all about these gunfights. You know, at least you have one player working that pin from head side, but you have to hold down towards top AC. Big kill versus Fred. Yeah, huge opportunity right now here for the Seattle Surge. A break very well can decide how this game one goes. Mac with the snap. Let's step aside and see how the comms are sounding. A listening with Seattle. Fox on the box. I'm streaking. On the box. I can't Listen, kill that gas block. Time in orange. Bathroom and gas block. Two orange, one side. I'm on gas block. Don't streak me. Do not streak me. On the gas block. I'm coming for gas block. We're challenging him. Two on time, no, two on time, two on time. Gas block, gas block, gas block. Two on time. I got two. Nice, I'm One shot on time, one side of it. Yo, hey, mini AC, mini AC. Mini AC, Alec, one bullet, okay? Absolute on time, Jay. Big time, he's no trophy. I'm going towards new ground. I'm going gas. One front time. Nice, no trophy, no trophy on time. Alright, Alec was mini AC. I'm going to new, you guys play old. Yeah, yeah, it's a big time. They're going to spawn back door new. Yeah, I'm sitting in a corner in new. I reset her, okay? Okay, hold it. He's mini AC and old still. They're both there. Yeah, it's Tudo, Tudo, okay, Tudo, Tudo, Tudo. Do you still stay there? Yeah, yeah, I got it. Get the whole thing. Yes, guys, they're gonna be on the roof. Back there. 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 Back Front time, front time, front time. Front time, front time. Joe deceives. He, he went in front PD. Front PD. This is good pump. This is good pump. I'm closing back. Oh, he's in the back door already. Assault behind the van. He's playing his life. That's what we have. Every back, every back, every back. They can jump in the center. I know. Watch yourself. Watch your back. I'm taking it out, guys. I'm taking the door. I think we'll take one. H2 dead. I got stairs. I have stairs. Sander, Sander, Sander. I heard you. Sander, one shot inside of it. Inside I'm of it. I'm, I'm holding Puffer. I have Puffer. He ran up top. He ran up top. Oh, they're they're gonna gonna H2, yeah. one shot. One Listen, still up top. Alex top. Alex top. Yeah, I'm holding hold. I got the hitch one. I can't get the one. One's in the back of me. They're I got the hitch one. Hitch one there. One's in the back of me. I'm trying. Good time. Okay. H2 on me. Three. H2, H2, one shot. I'm trying. I'm trying. H2, one shot. I got it. Nice. That's a one shot. Bathroom or hold. Front door. Hold. Speak again. Same time. Same time. Yeah. I have H2 on me. Hey. Signed it. Nice, guys. Hold it, hold it buffer, hold it buffer. Nothing Xbox, shoot. one's Xbox. I mean, a nice check-in with the Seattle Surge. I mean, Jane, it feels like they're just having uh, a great time right yeah. now when it comes out to Embassy Hardpoint. There was a big spot where it was a 2v2 inside of Hotel. Sim and Mac are able to clutch up, and from there, they have not allowed for a single second to go the opposite direction. And now for LAG, we said coming into this series, they're staring at a mountain, and right now, that score is mimicking the storyline that we had coming into this series. Oh, yeah, that was a full 60 hold right there from Seattle. Gives himself a nice little comfortable lead as Mac does not slow down finally gets taken off of that streak but he does earn himself that cruise missile now Sid picks up one of his own 15 seconds till Seattle are able to take nap number one LAG trying to set up the pinch players pushing through orange players pushing through back kitchen they have to go now 
They gotta make a break, and it's gotta be quick. I mean, already this is a tall task for LAG. Can anybody oh! make a play happen as Mac nearly snaps on to three? However, he has set Sib up for a 1v1 gunfight. Arsene's able to take that. Gorillas are still fighting, but now it could be accuracy. They've got the angles locked down. Only a few more seconds. 249 to 180. LAG still in it. Still fighting. They still fighting, but Seattle just need one point. Uno, find these kills around P1. You hop on that time, the game is going to be yours. Oh, it's red. I don't even think he's smart. Okay, no big deal. AG just not spotting players, but here comes the streak from above, and that will be game. Seattle Surge deliver this iteration of the LA Gorillas, their first loss on Embassy Hardpoint. And it is a pretty well calm collected. Hard point throughout that one, Jay. I mean, off the start of a hard point, obviously we're going back and forth, talking yeah. about who's in the driver's seat, who's in the better position, but it just felt like for Seattle, mimicking the comms, never really felt like they weren't gonna take the hard point, to be honest. Yeah, the comms are beautiful, and that led to the success that they have in the hard point. But all, when the communication is like that, everyone's just calling out specific things, calling out what positions are open, where these players are coming from, and you saw that's what eventually led to a great hold on that P4 Hawker where they were able to grow the lead the way that they did. Seattle Surge was just a step ahead. Yeah. A couple times for LAG, they won a couple rotations. They just could have won that first wave of gunfights and Seattle were able to find that early break. And some of these money hills on the embassy is now LAG. Have to try to respond in the search and assure where Seattle, all series, all season long, yeah. this has been their weakest mode. All throughout the last stage, though, is where they have turned it up to a whole different level. So, with LNG falling short in that map for one, they lose this search to destroy. Seattle Surge is going to walk away with this one with ease. Yeah, that's what we talked about, right? For LAG, this is a huge hard point for them. And granted, you are facing off against Seattle on one of their best hard point maps, but on the inverse, you'll take this if you're LAG. You have yet to lose this hard point. So, I don't know, man. It became a tie game to me. I mean, at least when it came down to specific moments, I felt like it was this play right here, or rather at the start of that hard point in the office, where it was a 2v2. Seattle won that from there, they didn't lose a single second. And even if you think about back to four, we even got to that point where Joe sees makes that route all the way through back street. Yeah. He sets up the pinch, he spawns a bunch of the Seattle players all the way out towards tennis, and then they lose all their gunfight. Right. That was the most important thing. You have Surge spawning all the way across the map. Someone's got to get on the point, but you have to win that first wave of kills, because if you don't, then you allow the break to come in, and they were able to hold that for a full 60. I think that was the turning point in the game for me as Seattle Surge do exactly what we expect them to do. Best team in hardpoint, take map one. Yeah, they're showing their stuff already, 250 to 194. And I think for Seattle fans out there, Jade, that scoreboard is a welcoming sign. Oh, yeah. right? Seeing accuracy leading the entire lobby, I believe, in kills overall, 27 and 22. We saw Mac have a number of highlight plays. He finishes off this opener with a 1.21 overall KD. Like we said, man, for Seattle Surge, it, it, like, it's so funny. Like throughout the season, it's been so obvious, right? We're talking about, okay, they can win hard points, but they yeah. can't win s &D. We're looking at Mac, we're looking at accuracy. Little by little, man, every series, even you know when it comes into these different maps, it feels like they're starting to right the wrongs when it comes Definitely. down to their issues that they have suffered. And take a look at this, an exact comparison on what exactly we are discussing. Stage one to stage two, the SD performances have never been different than that. Oh, that's that's terrible. Because I'm pretty sure all four of those SD wins throughout stage one to stage two all came on land. That's they right. could not win an SD online. But all throughout stage three, this is what has been able to make series easy for them. Four and one record, 70% at getting that first blood which usually leads to about 90% of them finding that round win. They have completely flipped the switch when you talk about this mode and with this team, the way that they've been playing in response. If they can get this one down packed, without question, they are championship caliber. Now I want to ask you too, right? We're talking about Seattle Surge, now they're back on land. I mean, like we said, historically, they've been okay at Surge Destroy when it comes down to land. Online were really the biggest problematic moments for them, but what do you feel like has been the biggest difference, right? We're taking a look at stage one to stage two. Now we're here in stage three. And obviously, as we talked about it, in every metric, in every category, the search destroy has been totally flip-flopped. If you could point out one thing, what do you feel like has been the biggest difference? It's got to be the confidence, man. It's got to be the confidence Seattle Surge is starting to play with. You have unbelievable players on your squad, like Mac and Pred. You see the stats all throughout stage three. Pred was number one in SD KD with a 1.79. And you have Max in nice and comfortable, top five overall. He's the bomb with a 1.43. He's getting it done, getting that bomb planted. Pred is doing it when he finds that first blood. 
So when you get your SMGs, just setting the tone, setting the pace, it does wonders for your entire organization. They are just finding confidence in this mode. They just got to keep on form, man. You got to keep playing with that same amount of confidence. Yeah, you absolutely do. I mean, there were many who were talking about it, even coming into this qualifier in general until Seattle would obviously possess the number one seed. Now coming into the Optic Major, there are people who said, Seattle, this could be the last time that we see this four-man lineup together unless they're able to show us something, unless they're able to win Search Destroys. This has been the mode that has absolutely rejuvenated this team. But on the flip side, man, you could almost say the same for the LA Gorillas. They were for the longest time so great in their hard points, and then they started to figure out Search and Destroy and Control, as this will be the ultimate test. As we said for that game number three, it feels like it's got Seattle's name written all over it. Another chance for LAG to try and surprise us. As we jump in here for round number one, it is Surge starting things off on attack. Surge on the attack, just playing for the information. They know they have no trophy systems to work with, so you can't cross that B bomb with ease. As LAG do a great job of taking full map control. Sib is able to get some information onto one player, can't line up the snipe, and that's succeed finding that first blood. Yeah, that is great aggression being displayed there from the rookie. The same thing can be said for Joe Deceives. Thankfully, Pratt at least able to even up that map, man count a little bit nicer. 2v3 two, two currently right now here from Seattle. As Pratt looks to make the play, biggest problem obviously for Surge is that that bomb is down, but it's not been planted. Yeah, but Pratt is about to earn his dead silence. So he might be able to make a play through back alley. As he's slowly starting to edge his way up. The bomb is going to be down towards that B site. Yeah, you want to pop that before you climb this ladder as... Peekaboo. Saul's just looking at it. <laughs> Good effort, honestly, good effort, but so many players, whether it's Harpoint or Search Destroy, starting to learn how to play over toward the top side of the ACs. The ladder watched, and from there, LAG, they strike early, and they grab our opening round. Yeah, it's good stuff right there from the Gorillas to put a lot of aggression up through the middle of the map. They can take full map control from Seattle and trap them in towards back embassy. C starts it off by getting that first blood. They shut down that aggression, push towards hedge. And eventually they close out in the 3v1. Just the positioning they were able to take. Seattle, they struggle in their three sports, 11th in the league. Showed on that round number one as LAG take round one. I feel like for Exceed, I mean, he starts off our opening round with two kills, gets the first blood. Oftentimes he is the sniper player for the team. A lot of eyes, a lot of focus on him. As Pred, no surprise, he's able to answer with a first blood in round number two. And right now for Exceed, Hunting for information, just tossed out that stun. Is he gonna be aware of the play? Oh, it happens! Eat that one, Brett. Good work there from LAG as they clean up two in a row. Another man down situation for Surge. Oh, man down situation. Agnes position is gonna be known. Assault is able to take him down, line it up oh, he's for back. the very final kill. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. And it all goes back to exceed, man, hitting that quick scope onto Fred. Tries to run away, but catches the timing, lines it up beautifully. Shuts down the aggressor on the side of Seattle Surge, and LAG now take two rounds in a row. We thought about it, just going into that round, Exceed. A lot of focus on him. And he's able to deliver with a wonderful quick scope, putting LAG up now two to zero. See if they can build upon it. You got two players who could maybe have streaks in their future. Assault and Exceed off to a lovely start through our first two rounds, but Seattle now back on the attack. And it looks like that is going to be a quick bomb plant to succeed. So the timing, yes he does. Dives out and at the same time, Assault is also able to find one himself. LAG have been downright dominant to kick off these rounds. This is perfect read right there from the Gorillas. They know that Seattle like to get this bomb down towards B with the quickness. They don't give it up. They attack it at the perfect time. They're able to find the first two kills. So now in the 4v2, Sib at least lines one, takes down Assault from top AC. That bomb is still down. There's only 45 seconds left. LAG basically still have you guys trapped in towards Embassy. Yeah, for LAG, it's just like, hey, let's just stand still. Just play a trade. Make them come to us, Sib. Let's have that pack out, Fred. Goals for aggression as exceed. Ends his life on a five spree, but was a 2v4, has now turned into a 1v2. Sim, oh, 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 oh. the all to do hits the snap. And I believe he'll be able to get that bomb down. Arsenis, can he arrive in time? Yes, he will. Denies the clutch as Alec will come away with it. 
Sweat off the brow there for LAG, 3-0. Just good work from the Gorillas to keep their man advantage in their favor. Even though Sib gets a couple easy reads in that situation, RCD's a two-time world champion. He's not panic in those moments. Waits for the bomb to get planted. Able to shoot Sib in the back for free. Secure the round for the Gorillas. Three in a row now. I just want to see a sniper duel. I do. I want to see a sniper duel between Exceed and Sib. Maybe on the cross? Potentially? Something? Not yet. Sib on one side. Meanwhile, Exceed on the other. Cracks the whip, but nothing landed. At least able to provide a bit of pressure. And Sib able to tack him up. He does not have the sniper on the other side. That is straight tack shots coming in as Arsenis will be there to fall. Exceed going for the wrap as this is a big spot right now from LAG. They're trying to get that bomb down, but they need someone to be on Overwatch, and that is Exceed's job. Oh, yeah, Exceed is in a great position to at least release some of the pressure towards top AC. Hello! A couple teammates who are working Ooh. through the back alley. Press able to take down Exceed, make it a 3v2. But with the positioning right now on the side of the Gorillas, you can rotate this bomb towards A, get it down for free. Well, Joe seems to decide to go for it. Oh, goodness. Not far away. Back. Still yet to get on the board. Well, now 0 and 4. Now brings it to a 2 versus 2. And right now for Sib. He had, does have that trophy, so no dead silence pop. Meanwhile, for Joe Deceives, he will rock that, and they have their eyes set on that A-bomb. Can Sib get the timing is really going to be the question. Decides to jump on out, able to find one. Now brings it in to 1v1, and it's Sib with the snaps again. But thankfully this time, it allows for a round. Seattle finally able to get on the board, Jay. It wasn't easy, man, but they finally oh. find their first round. As LAG did a great job of just putting a lot of pressure in towards Orange. You saw Joe Deceives, he was setting up Assault. Once he times that nade in towards Orange, you get him to back out from the top steps, give an easy kill to Assault to turn it into a 2v2. But then Sib, being the player holding down that A site, finds the timing from top plat, wins the first one, knows the positioning of the second, and is able to find three kills on the round to close it out. Seattle down 3-1 now. Talked about it lately for Seattle. Somewhat of a uh, uncustomary start to this embassy search destroy. 2 0 on it so far throughout the major three qualifiers, and they have been dominant dubs at that. We're talking 6 2, 6 1. Finally able to get on the board after four rounds of play, but it could be Pred, who's able to start things off nicely. He finds a kill. Meanwhile, though, Exceed, still being a thorn in the side, does have that sniper out. Biggest point of emphasis, though, Jay, is that that bomb is down. Bomb is down, and Mac at least finds one to oh. hit Parker. Unfortunately for AC, now time is starting to tick. You still have to worry about Mac, who's just roaming around in towards Orange. Pred finds one through the middle of the map. It's all left up to exceed. He gets taken down. And Seattle surge with the utmost confidence. Get the bomb down again quickly. Find that first blood. Eventually win the trade battle. As Sip said, the sniper isn't working. I'm going to do it with the AR. And he, he has hit beams ever since. Pretty sure that now puts him on a five spree. One off our internet cruise. Yeah, he's just been hitting some wild shots so far. I'll tell you what, man, we talked to this guy out of game. He is hilarious. In game, he's a madman. He's, oh, yeah. he's focused up. I think we've seen him maybe smile like two or three times on broadcast. I think it's him and Big Wake who have a tie for the least smiles that we've seen in the CDL match. Oh my God, exceed another bullet that's able to land. And another big one there on the Fred. Archies will answer again. Wonderful start here for LAG. And accuracy, a sniper bullet with his name on it. The Iceman will eat it. Regardless, he eventually does get cleaned up, and now it is Mac left by his lonesome 1v3 now. Finds the first kill onto RCDs, but he knows that, that bomb is gonna be getting planted towards A. So he's gonna be able to get a little bit of that information, but you have to find three kills and eventually shot it, stick that defuse. Now time is starting to tick. He's going to work his way up through back alley, but the Gorilla's are going to be ready for it. Oh, absolutely. And that comes around the corner with maybe a bit of confidence. He's maybe thinking, hey, if I walk away with one kill, maybe I pop Deddy. Maybe there's a chance. And right as he does that, runs right into the reticle of Assault. It was made for positions just like that one. Those three bullets land. And from there, LAG 
able to answer after allowing a few to go the opposite direction up four rounds to two. And you can see, it is Exceed leading the comms, leading the strategies. He's having a phenomenal game so far, Jay. Oh yeah, he's making impactful plays. Already three first bloods on the map. So he's trying to even up that stat line. Talk about this series at one to one by securing this search and destroy. All our pressure once again towards B. Seattle are not going to slow down. They get a couple stun hit markers at Brett. He's going to be the attack. Oh, he absolutely can. Brett for one. Joe deceives on the other side. Is at least able to trade, but a nade from Brett now will allow for it to be a 1v4. Now a 1v3. Joe deceives left in a very difficult spot. Excuse me, a 1v2. All out chaos to kick off this round, but can it be the rookie? To make the place happen, he's absolutely going to spot somebody on the bomb, but Surge stay up and they win the swing round. That's a good job from Surge to not get away from what has been working for them so far. And that's just being super aggressive towards this B-bomb. You don't send Mac by himself this time, you send Pred alongside him. As Pred with the tack, he's just able to slow those players down through the back alley. He finds the first, finds the second with the nade. Eventually puts Seattle Surge in that man advantage. I thought Joe DeCeves had a great opportunity to clutch that round up. Yeah. Just waited till the very end where his death silence was about to run out. For Accuracy to eventually find that timing to secure the round. Seattle Surge now down 4-3. Seattle trying to claw their way back. As we said for LAG, you got to have an answer. The number one versus the number eight seed. So far for Exceed, three first bloods in this game. Tied with Pred for the most first bloods in the lobby. Tries to take the lead and nearly takes the head clean off of Sim. On the other side, though, it's Arsides who's able to strike first. It's good work from Arsides to eliminate Pred of all people. But Sim does a great job of taking down Arsides, maintaining that map control, and now being a 3v3 situation. His accuracy, I don't know if he was able to spot that first player onto Assault, but he gets some assistance from Mac. He's able to back him down. Now they know where the pressure's coming from. Both players on their bellies. Accuracy with the information. Assault, well, now he's got it as well. Very talented AR players. Oh, and Accuracy's just able to escape with his life. So with that, the pressure is now on to the Gorillas. As Accuracy will call for reinforcements. He's got Mac at his side. He's got Sib on a flank. However, Mac gets cut down. Accuracy's able to win his fight. Now 2v2, and that bomb's got to get planted. Can Sib arrive? 2v2, as the bomb is now going to go down. You're waiting for his teammates to get into the play, but Exceed is able to line it up. I don't know if he connects Hold with on. the sniper for that final kill, but... Hold on. The young man is roaring. He oh, up. my. <laughs> All right. That's the game we're playing. Exceed. So often, how many times have we seen players go for the hit marker and from there the round just completely explodes, but he just pulls out that, that pistol. That X-12, a point to prove. Now nine and four for Exceed. Wants to try to put Seattle to bed quickly. And he could be the first line of defense is once again, Jay, that strategy is to get the bomb down quick. Nades are tossed, utility exchanged. LAG now on the retake. Oh, LAG on the retake, and Jodice finds himself in a great position with that dead talent. Top should be able to find a freebie. Exceed finds a second. 4v2. Sib and Pred have to go big. Oh, what's up to the young guns? Pred at least able to answer for it's one. On the Sib, he's got to go for it. And Arsley's, he's punching in the digits already. Pred looks to arrive, but it's LAG who punch in the defuse. And with that, they answer back in the search after a fantastic performance across the board, but the star in game two, Jay, undoubtedly was Xe. Oh, Xe set the tone, man. Took over in his search to destroy. It didn't matter what gun he had in hand. He was finding multiple picks with the sniper. Shuts down the aggressive push towards B, the first go around with the TAC 56 in that final round. Does it with the fast stab. He said that the Gorillas needed to respond in their search and destroy versus a team like Seattle who have been stellar in the respawns. And they do a great job of doing so. Tie the series up at one. And now the momentum's on their side. I gotta say, man, I feel like, you know, like, like I think I've mentioned it a few times so far throughout our cast, but 
you and I have had so many opportunities to cast over the LA Gorillas. I know there's a lot of focus on Arsenies, maybe Joe Deceives, just because we haven't really heard about that name lately. But I'll tell you what, man, every time that we cast over them, I feel like Exceed is getting more and more confident. Oh, yeah. He's facing off against some of the Titans in the league and absolutely delivering, right? Even in maps where they've lost, it feels like he is the beacon for them. The player who can get them going back in a series, back in a map, has a stellar performance there with the sniper. And like I said, it's a team effort, but it feels like he's the guy calling the strategies in game, getting the boys yeah. hyped. A very, very solid pickup there for LAG as their rookie is able to bring them a game to victory. And now we've got Fortress Control up next, man. This is uh, this is going to be a tall task. Oh, yeah. and we've <laughs> talked about it in the respawns, but it looks to be, at least from a stat point of view, the most heavily in favor of the surge. But we will have to wait and see. We're headed to a commercial break. But like we said, once we come back, it is Fortress Control. We'll be back on your browsers in just a moment.
All righty, friends. Welcome back to day one of the Texas Major. Maybe even a, a howdy, Jade. You got a howdy in you? Howdy, folks. There it is. I love that. <laughs> that was a great howdy, my friend. Maybe I learned it from you. I learned Absolutely. from you. You know, I'm Texas native, not Texas native. I've lived here before. It feels like a second home. But I tell you what, man, a great, great performance so far in this series. As we said, the number one seed taking on the number eight seed. It's been competitive so far, Jay. It definitely has. You know, Seattle Surge do exactly what we expect them to do. That's take the respawn. But the biggest thing was that Gorillas were able to spawn respond by taking that search and destroy in a search and destroy that Seattle have finally found exactly. some success in recently. Yep. So that's a big one for them. Now it's all about this control. Whoever takes this takes a series in my opinion. Without a doubt, I know we have two players that we want to focus on heading into this Fortress control. And you know, oftentimes when we're talking about Fortress, a, a map that's very much based off of the SMGs, it's really the inverse when we're talking about comparisons. Really when it comes down to this map three control, we're talking about assault, we're talking about accuracy so far, Jay. These guys, I mean, they've been the difference, it feels like, in terms of uh, really where the success has been. Oh, yeah, you can see the stat line for Assault. He's just been taking over when you talk about this mode. And usually, when I find myself talking about the Gorillas in control specifically, they still have a .8 KD as a squad when you talk about that mode, even with Assault having a 1.32 <laughs> so far in this stage, man. So Assault's got to try to go big. Actually, just got to hold down the lanes for his SMGs. It's both of these players. Have some great teammates on this map. Pred, he is unstoppable <laughs> when you're talking about the attacking rounds. And what makes this map so difficult versus a team like Seattle Surge is that they find themselves a majority of the time winning their attacking rounds. It doesn't happen on a map like Fortress, but they make it look easy. Yeah, how uncommon is that? Like, we're talking stats-wise, they're winning 50% of the time. Wow. When they are on Fortress attack. That is... Wild. It feels like they're playing a different map. I don't know, maybe they're playing a, a different version of Albagra Fortress. Who knows? Maybe they've got some keys underneath the map, not exactly sure. And now, well, that attacking prowess will now be put to the test. Seattle starting things off on what is not at all the normal, rather the more preferred side, but they've been able to make it look like that so far throughout the season. And right now, Jay, they are already one segment in. It might be there, I have no idea. I see just on the cusp, able to drop a one, and that is not a segment captured. Big win coming from the Rook again. That's good work right there from the Gorillas to not allow that first segment to get completed for the Seattle Surge. Now you put them in towards the trap. They was able to find two. You still have a couple of players farther pushed up towards middle maps. Just have to find these couple of kills and none other than NXC to start it off with two. And you and I were talking about it even just during the commercial break about, okay, Fortress Control. We're talking about the SMGs. Obviously, the ARs were highlighted for obvious reasons, but it is going to come down to that aggression. Arsene's yet to get on the board, but thankfully, his rookies and really his uh, COD champs compadre and Assault having a wonderful start so far to this fortress. There's 30 seconds left to go. Seattle are in the absolute oh, bar trap. That's now seven a row as a team. LAG surely do not let this one slide. Oh, yeah, there's no way they can let this one out. <laughs> if I'm with them, though, I'm putting at least one player on towards that A point to decap it a little bit, but they're oh, finding oh. all the kills in the feed. That's another four dead. But a four the out of search have not been able to find anything on their attacking side. And now with only five seconds left, it's looking like this is going to be a great defensive hole for the Gorillas, not giving up any segments. Now puts them in a nice little one only. Yeah, I mean, that's the, the biggest thing, right? Is LAG, okay, cool. They walk away with the, the, with the defense, but they're able to do it, not allowing a single segment and not allowing it from what is without question the best fortress attack team in the game. As we said, it was a slow start for Arsties. I think he pretty much does not even get a single kill through the first round, but it was the other boys. It was the rest of the squad picking up for him. And now it's LAG, uh, LAG's opportunity, man. I mean, tell you what, all they need is one segment, and at least they're in the lead. Yeah, I think right now, if you are the Gorillas, you have a couple of players who are working on some streaks. I think that's the thing that you want to put a lot of focus on to earn that food missile, because it's not easy to win attacking rounds on the side of the Gorillas. Only have a 5% chance at winning a round on this side of the map. They do find a couple kills, though. They're able to stop that clock. That's all four dead. Seattle coming off spawn. Let's see if they can make this. An early segment capture. They've got two bodies now, make it nearly three on it. Assault looking for the angles, looking for the opportunities. Meanwhile, for Sib, but he's trying to cut down the middle lane, but he's got nobody to join him. That is two segments grabbed here off the rip from LAG. And even if this round came to a close here, you'd still be pretty happy with it. But Jay, we've got a minute still left to go. Oh, yeah, that's job well done for the Gorillas, even if they don't find anything else on this round. 
just completing those two segments can be so impactful as we get to the later half of this oh. game. It's going to be on Arsenis with the flank. Fortunately, not able to pick up anything. Almost made his way out, but Seattle finding all the kills. Now the Gorillas have to fight out of this one. Oh, now it could be Fred's opportunity to strike on four. Now make it five in a row. We're talking about players who are not on the board. Max still yet to arrive. Oh, with nine to kick us off, but it's all right, Mac. No pressure. None at all. 30 seconds still left to go, as we said, for LAG. Technically job done, but they're not ready to give this one up here. The only problem is that that decision might be made for them. Exceed and Arsene is able to come away with two, but it's Brent's opportunity to try and strike again. Mac able to get on the board. The crowd loves it. And we'll make it two, Jake. That's good work right there from Mac. To lead that pressure over towards A. Finally find his first two kills on the map. Gorilla's able to stop that clock by having one player sneak out towards B. He gets cut down. Now the last layer up is going to be Joe Deceives in towards maps. Not going to have enough time to get towards either one of these points as LAG are going to walk away with two segments. Also have that cruise missile to work with. Even though Seattle Surge take that round, LAG do a great job of doing what they need to do. Just in case it gets to that round number five. As it so often does. <laughs> now they put themselves up by two segments. Solid first two rounds. Coming in from the Gorillas, but as we talked about it for Surge, they gotta try to show us on land that incredible ability on fortress control attacks. Last time it was LAG who got them in the hold early. I mean, really, it was probably just a Half of a second from getting at least one segment over on A, but they were left without a single tick to their name. Fred trying to get off to a hot start. Flies in from the skies. However, it's a three for one trade. Only player alive currently is going to be Sib. Making his presence felt early him. over at that A zone. Question being, how long can he stay alive? And not long, Jay. Not long at all. Not long at all. Now your teammates have to fight out of their base. And Joe DeCees was the guy that was causing problems the last go around. He finds himself already 15 to 6 in that KD department on a 5 3. Can potentially earn himself his own cruise missile. Great shots onto accuracy. Not able to pick up the kill. He's trying so hard to find one, but eventually Mac finds in and takes him down. This has been a great defensive hold. Once again, nothing to show for on the side of Seattle Surge. Oh. You have to get out of your base, and the team kill is not going to help. Yeah, that does not help at all. Fred was trying to make a bit of a route. You could see Seattle, their arrows. They were in a good position to, to maybe at least get somebody over toward that A zone. But once more, they have been forwarded. Once more, they have been shut down. As Joe DeCeves continuing to be the talk of the town, the primary player here on Fortress. 15 seconds to go. Can Seattle just even see the objective, let alone capture a segment? It has been flawless defense so far. Here from the Gorillas, Assault goes low. One player is at least able to get on in accuracy. Can he stay up into the 1v1 chow? Arsenis is there. Seattle, they do have some bodies, though, that make it into A. Oh, right now, and if you're in Seattle in this situation, everybody just get on the point, try to complete those two segments because all of LAG were putting a lot of focus over towards B, where they now have to invest that cruise missile. You take down Fred, that's a clean four dead. But if you are a Seattle search, at least you get that one segment complete. But I think regardless, it's gonna be the Gorillas, even if they lose this attacking round, by just being up by one segment, are gonna guarantee, guarantee themselves that defense going into that round number five. So Seattle surge, they're gonna have to show why they are the best attacking team on Fortress if they clutch up on this defense. Yeah, it's a great investment, right, from Assault. Oftentimes, we're, you know, for those who maybe are new to watching Fortress Control, it may seem like an odd play. It's like, you know what, cool, what's, what's the big deal if they get that second segment? Like we said, LAG, just in that moment, because they don't give away the second one, they are guaranteed to be in the best spot in the game if we go to a round number five. But still got a bit of business to attend to before then. Our, our city's trying to get off to a hot start. As you can see, the play right now for LAG is to at least get somebody in to be, and that is job well done. Exceed is on that point, trying to cause a bit of chaos behind enemy lines. Yeah, Exceed is just trying to stay alive as long as he can. Try to open up a lane for his teammates to try to get out towards A, but he gets cut down, and then Saul also drops to Mac. So now all of the Gorillas just taking their time in their base, trying to find an opening. Eventually, Joe Deceives does drop in. 
They're not moving, man. They're taking their sweet time to try to play for some kills, potentially earn themselves their own cruise missiles as well. I mean, think right now for LAG, it's maybe just playing for picks, maybe hoping that from somebody from Seattle gets a tad bit aggressive. And I think for Surge, just given the the lack of noise, they're just like, hey, you know what? We're just gonna kind of hang out. They ain't doing Nathan, man. I know. I think for Surge, I mean, we know it, All right? LAG, they know that they have gotten that defense. Let's not feed the streaks, but at the same time for Seattle. You may want to force a bit of aggression. I don't know, Jay. You might want to, but you also don't want to give them any streaks <laughs> to go into that follow around. The crowd is obviously not happy about it. But the Gorillas are trying to win the damn match. Sarah just holding in the back of this one. Final 15 okay. seconds. Somebody's got to make a move. No one's making a move, Lando. Somebody, come on. Somebody move. They're not trying to die. Somebody move, please. Assault, I beg you. I beg you! I know what it is. What's that? Gorillas are just working on their setup because we're playing Fortress Hardpoint <laughs> in that map number four, so at least that pre three is gonna be pretty dominant just to play like that. Just mid game, you know, just mid game. It's like, you know what? Let's just practice a little bit. You know, it's Fortress just a Control little. after all. Let's just enjoy ourselves. No, obviously, man. Don't like to see that. Fortress Control, we know it. All about the defenses, LAG, knowing they've got round five secured. Don't want to try to feed the streaks from a strategic standpoint. Obviously makes sense, we hate to see that. But round five, here we go, Jack. Here we go, and I'm pretty sure Pred has a cruise missile to work with. It's all gonna be about these initial fights. You see the records for both of these squads, LAG, Stellar. Wow. In round five, when you talk about control, it all comes down to these kills. They're able to find the initial two. Last two players from Seattle, they're able to get on out, but Joe Deceives cut them down. Last player towards the middle map, it's, it's gonna be Max. So far, the Gorillas, they do a great job of holding down the left side of the map, but Seattle, they're finding openings through double doors. They are indeed. Joe Deceives trying to go for the right timings, does his job. However, the rest of the team not able to slay the rest of the members that remain inside of the objective. Exceed, looking to get involved. Still, no segment officially captured yet from Seattle. However, as that 1v1 goes their way, they are on the road to what could be a full zone capture. We've yet to see it so far in this game, and right now it is looking good for Seattle. Winning the trades, and Mac, he's remaining inside of the truck. Assault looks to get involved, and Assault kill. will take both. Big, big two-piece there out of him. And the second segment does not get completed on the side of Seattle Surge. Now you have to fight out of your base, uh -oh. and Assault is cutting them all down. Uh -oh. He finds himself on five in a row. Pred Wait. actually makes his way into bottom art, but you still have to get by Assault. Assault with the tack 56. He's making it look easy. Earns himself that cruise missile. You're able to stop that pressure. Now your main focus is on where is Pred? Exactly, that is the biggest emphasis. This is the player who could break open everything as long as Pred remains behind enemy lines. There is still a chance. 42 seconds is where we're currently paused at. And as we said for LAG, they gotta check every single corner. Pred erased, and now they can focus their attention onto the objective. And recognizing such assault, looks to bring in the cruise with that. Mac will fall. Arsenis picking up kills himself. 30 seconds to go. Can Seattle get the final segment at A and get another minute on the clock? It's 14 to 9 and lives remaining. Seattle surge. I'm pretty sure Pred still has that cruise missile. But he can't find the right timing to use it. He might have to invest it right off spawn, and he does. You're gonna pick up all the information. Your teammates just have to find oh. a couple kills. That's two down in the feed. They find an opening, trying to get over towards B. Get play number six, accuracy. He's got a big gun fight that he has to win versus Joe Deceives. Meanwhile, it does open up a lane. Four seconds to go. Right, he's gotta go for the dolphin dive. He gotta walk away with that fight. LAG, they win their 1v1s, and they win the map. A stalemate in round four, but they knew that it was theirs to throw away. All defenses here on Fortress Control. No surprise generally, but with Seattle Surge, man, having that previous prowess in a spot like that, a tad surprise that we didn't see more of an answer, honestly. I was expecting a lot more from Seattle yeah. Surge, especially when you talk about their attacking success on this map. They're the best attacking team. You talk about Fortress Control, but they were only able to find one segment that entire time. The Gorillas did a great job just slaying around towards Mac, keeping them in the trap. And every time someone had to go big, it was Assault and Joe Deceives. Three Kate Emmons. Always finding two or three in the feed to shut down that push. 
But the Rillas do a great job securing that round number five defense. They have the cruise missiles to work with just in case anything gets out of hand. And eventually they clutch up on the control. That's now a huge respawn taking away from Seattle Surge. If you are the Gorillas, you're at least able to force that game five, but if you're Seattle Surge, man, that's one that you basically had to guarantee. Yeah, I mean, we almost kind of guaranteed it for them, but yeah. we're talking about it, it's like, okay, pressure's on LAG, you don't win the opening hard point. Well, you could go down because of that fortress control that sits at game number three, and a shocker here from the LA Gorillas as they look impeccable on the defensive side and not allowing for Seattle to really spread their wings and get anything going. And we were all wondering, like, what kind of Gorillas we were going to get because they start off the stage 0-3. Yeah. They had to clutch up to get their winner's bracket spot by defeating Florida in the game five, by taking down Vegas Legion in that game four. They did a great job of doing that to get in this position. We thought their hard point wasn't the best, but ever since they fell down in hard point, their search to destroy and their control has gotten a lot better. So now Seattle Surge, they have to rely on the mode that has gotten through a lot, gotten them through a lot of series this year. Try to extend it. It's all gonna come down to this Fortress hard point, man. We'll talk about this. It's gonna be about these rotations. Pretty sure Seattle are third on this map, going up against the Gorillas, who are 12th oh, overall. Okay. So you gotta put yourself in the best possible situation when you're talking about the P2s, when you're talking about the P3s, because if you let those hills get away from you, Seattle Surge are gonna be able to capitalize on that, potentially force that map by. And I'll say it too, man. I mean, obviously, like we said, we're looking at the maps and modes. I mean, if LAG come away with game two, game three, and game four, it just feels like you have another level of excitement, oh, right? Yeah. And speaking of excitement, we got the Texas fans super hyped. Obviously, their boys are going to be lined up next versus the Boston Breeze. The crowd already has been absolutely fantastic. I don't know about you, Jay. This is probably one of my favorite crowds I think we've had in COD history. Just tell you what, man, Texas knows how to do it. But, but getting back to the series, LAG, they're able to win the Embassy Search Destroy, that in which Seattle have looked fantastic on. Yep. You beat them on the Fortress Control, which has been downright scary for Seattle. And then if you're also able to win the Fortress Hardpoint, I feel like it sets LAG up for a wonderful opportunity, maybe a wonderful run maybe here at Major 3. Oh yeah, without question, man, because Seattle are no slouches. This is a team who went flawless, basically, in stage yeah. four. Four and one overall record. They dominate when you talk about the hard points. Their s &E was almost flawless. The only map that they did lose is going to be that map number five in that LSC low. So I just think right now, with all the questions we have on the Gorillas, they're shutting us all up. Everyone was expecting Seattle to come out and win this one. But the Gorillas, they came to play, man. Yeah, they absolutely have. We all love ourselves an underdog story. And so far throughout CDL history, when we talk about number one seeds versus the number eight seed, it's not really all that wonderful of a record for the number ones, only four in three. So typically, it's been pretty 50-50, quite a few game fives since, as we said, the number one played the number eight just starting back last season in LAG. Trying to showcase that they deserve some praise, they deserve some props. And what could be the final game of this series? We head back to Fortress, but this time for some hard point. We had some questions on how would the SMGs play from LAG, specifically it was Joe Deceives who was snapping. We'll see if he can try to deliver and the same thing can be said from Exceed. They both had their chances so far throughout this series and they are the reason why this team finds themselves up 2-1. to one. Oh yeah, and so far this has been a great hold from the Gorillas, starting off on the better side, getting 13 seconds off of P1. It's basically holding Seattle in that trap. And now they're able to break on out. These next wave of kills is going to be massive. Seattle able to come out on top in the trade situation. Exceed's the only player here is trying to contest it still. Oh. He finds two but can't find the third on towards accuracy. What? Now you have to focus up, man, because you don't want those spawns to flip in. Seattle put a lot of pressure already towards stage. LAG now is going towards the battle side. Oh, oh my! Heavens! Good God. I don't know, man. It just feels like anytime there's a player right there, something either goes right or incredibly wrong. Some missed shots there from Agnes and Jay. Uh, that's the only way I can go. Yeah, that's tough. Now they still have spawns. There's that. Definitely still have spawns on the side of Seattle. So I'm pretty sure that was assault oh, in that assault. situation as well. My bad. So. The Anasaurus do a great job of flipping the map, taking the better side of the spawns. And now it's all about the hold. LAG, they were able to flip it right on back. You see, then Joe Deceives, they find two. They already find the break. And now if you are Seattle Surge, this is going to be your last push because you have to start thinking about that P3 hard point. 
Yeah, absolutely do. 25 seconds still to go in Seattle. Well, they're hitting that green light. They're trying to catch a few players in stride, trying to cut the map. And that is wonderful work here from Seattle in a position to walk away with the final 15. Accuracy eventually does get found out, but that is fine if you're Seattle. You'll happily allow for LAG to grab the final 10 seconds. Meanwhile, you set up for Fountain. A definite chance for a full 60, and these early kills are going to be big. And another one here from Lamar, seven and five. Mars is trying to be that cutoff man, being the player pushed out towards P1, but he's still going to get that close back spawn. Now they're looking for a lot of pressure on through double doors. Oh! Can't find any of the kills as Pred finds three. Now on a nine streak. You can start to get aggressive on the map. We were wondering when Prep was going to hit that next level. What? And he's doing it right now, 10 screen counting, before he does get shut down. <laughs> like three players who were all just trying to make their way past that 50 yard line. Pred says no. An incredible start here from the Aussie as Surge pretty much guaranteed to have that full 60 at the fountain. And the scariest part, Jake, is that for Seattle, they are the number one breaking team here on Fortress Harpoint. I mean, a break here would surely spell disaster from the Gorillas. They've got to get their heads on straight and soon. And hopefully, they can knock away Pred in some of these early gunfights. Yeah, it's all about keeping Seattle on this side of the map. Oh, Make sure what? you're blocking those spots. Pred, huh? some of that pressure. He finds the first accuracy with the second. At least the close ones are still in for the Gorillas, but already the break is here for Seattle. Surge, Mac finds two, lines them up with that Baznev. As now they are in. Gorillas. Very important gunfights here to not let the game get out of hand. Okay, well, that's a three for one trade. Last player. Oh, okay, my. He absolutely gets melted. McKenzie, understandably so, the man who delivers the final blow as Surge just have come out in this opening hard point with the point to prove. As we said, so much expectations on their shoulders, sporting that number one seed, not trying to get upset in their first match of the tournament. Mac, no, well, he doesn't have a reload, doesn't matter. Ends up coming away with it, Surge, the early break, and Surge with the solid, solid advantage, basically up 100 as we fly in now toward Blacksmith. Time to go over towards the Blacksmith. You're now gonna have the Gorillas maintaining this side of the map, staying pushed out towards stage, but you do have one player in accuracy who is trying to work towards the pinch and take care of him. Now it's all about winning these gunfights. They cannot come out on top in the engagements. Neither squad now gonna be able to get any time off of this hill, but what? Yeah, just doing a great job! No, no. And finding the no. kills. What a snap no. right there from the Predator. Are you serious? I almost took off my headset. Can't How let that happen, that? man. Is, is this gun shooting faster? I don't know what's going on. 16 and 6. Currently from Pred. I don't even know if he's common right now, Jack. I think it is just straight up gunfight after gunfight. Accuracy, have your moment as well. Taking a look at the slaying numbers, you got 15 and 7, 15 and 10. Max has been making some influential kills now at 11 and 9. But as we said, the star so far here in game four is Pred. First set of rotations complete, and it does not get much better than that if you are Seattle. One, maybe one more good hard point, Jay, and this one could quickly be over. LAG in desperate need of some life. Yeah, LAG need a good setup, man. You know where the swans are coming in for the side of Seattle Surge. So about keeping them in that trap, but they're not blocking that stage spawn. So a couple players from Seattle are gonna spawn on that side of the map. They're still not able to get on towards P1. Because now with only 35 seconds left, they do find a couple kills. They're able to leave some of that pressure. Seattle, they're thinking big picture. They're gonna cut their losses at P1. They're trying to find that spawn for P2. You spot oh the game. Oh my, man. Fred just says, uh, no, not, absolutely not. No, I'm gonna walk through your shots. Eventually does get foiled, eventually found out, but Exceed already finding one. He has gotta go big in the stun. Does at least connect. We'll see what he can do as he's managed to stay alive. Gets the information on to Sid. Question is, can his teammates win their gunfights? He wins his, but the rest Cannot be said. Exceed doing everything he can toward the back start of the spawn. However, he gets dealt with. And take a look at that setup right now, Jay, for Seattle. A setup that allows for them to also escape, make it into Fountain. A wonderful, wonderful plate spot here for Surge. All eyes on LAG now. Yeah, the Gorillas have to find this break, man, because Seattle, they're thinking big picture. They already have players out towards the backsmith so they can win that rotation over towards next. 
as they know all of the gorillas gonna be putting pressure on towards the back end. Mac and Fred combined for two, Sip with the third. They hold strong from the front side of that hill. And are able to now breach that 200 point mark. This game is basically over, Lando. If gorillas do not rotate over towards P3, Seattle are gonna close this one out now. We've seen some crazier comebacks. I mean, uh, I don't know, Jay, LAG in the Fortress Control. They were working on their setups for Fountain. The question being, can they break through? Right now, they've got two players making their way in from the top map. The problem being is that there was no teammate support. Arsenis behind enemy lines, behind enemy territory, gets gunned by Sib, and from there, the early chance from LAG quickly will evaporate oh, man. into clean air, and Pred and Sib having themselves an opportunity to showcase why this team is one of the best, if not the best, in Hardpoint right they now. They got them in the trap, man. All of the gorillas are gonna consistently spawn out towards bottom arch. You have to wrap back and try to get out from the peep one side, but you have to get past Pred and Sid. They are just cutting you guys down. Pred is finding all the timings. Already on another five speed, doesn't want to invest that cruise missile. He's keeping the gun hot. He does get traded by Exceed, but Seattle can still win it here with one more set of kills. Yeah, absolutely. They can still win it here. LAG, no bodies. They're really going to be near this. Maybe somebody can make a heroic last second play. Could be Exceed. Everybody lingering to the middle side of the map. We see a team kill that ends up coming forward. Mac wins that, and there you go. To game five, we head. As Seattle Surge do not bow down. They swat away the gorillas like flies. Good heavens, Jake. That just, uh... I'll be honest, I, I thought multiple times of just leaving. Uh, yeah. It just felt like, okay, I'm gonna take a bathroom break. This is going game five. You can just tell how the game <laughs> is going, man. Like, Seattle, they were in control from start to finish of this map. When Fred was slaying the way that he was, hitting the turn on that, the turn on's the way that he was. You're definitely not going to find any success. That scoreline isn't pretty. 250 to 89. In a map like Fortress, where it's usually scrappy between both of these squads, but Seattle Surge do a great job of reading the spawns, flipping them when they need to, and then getting that money hill towards the P3, even with the Gorillas working on their setup in the previous map, wasn't good enough to shut down a Seattle Surge as they take both the hard points in this series. Now we have another game five. Lando, I don't know what it is, man. <laughs> it's me and you all the time when we're talking about these game five. I actually just took a quick little look at my phone, and Tim's even like going, our stats guy is going back and forth <laughs> with it. Like, okay, you know what? It almost feels like the stats are irrelevant when it comes down to you and I, specifically yeah. you. You know, you're, you're one ahead of me when it comes to the game fives. But number one versus number eight, we said it was David versus Goliath. But right now, David's a tad tested, but who knows? We'll see if he can answer in this game number five. When we come back after the break, we're seeing El Asilo search and destroy. Stay with us.
Alrighty, Texas, it is game five time. The LA Gorillas taking on the Seattle Surge. It feels like this series maybe had the chance to go the distance. We've chatted about it numerous times, the number one versus the number eight seed. But the biggest thing, Jay, that we got to talk about, game fives are all about ice. And there is no player that we need to look at more than that man in accuracy. Take a look at the experience that he has over his teammates. Oh, man, it basically wow. showing that accuracy is an old head, brother. He is a <laughs> veteran without question. More career land experiences than his entire team combined. That's wild. This is your leader. And now in the game five, this is the guy who you have to look at to really set the tone for the Seattle Surge squad. I don't know about you, man, but it feels like just lately on LSC, little search destroyed the stats by no means back this up. So, you know, whatever. But it just feels like lately on LSC, little, we've got so many rounds that are coming down to the wire. We know the way it plays with dead silence. You're going to need those clutch moments to be there. And as we said, positive for Seattle is that you got quite a bit, ex quite a bit of experience there in the Iceman, but you could say the exact same thing for LAG. Plenty of world championships there in that lineup from Archdies and Assault. Both rosters trying to avoid that elimination bracket as we jump in to round number one. El Asilo search and destroy. Last s &D, it was LAG who came away with the dub and largely in part to this man who also had the sniper out. But it is Mac who will answer early. Stuns himself, but it's no big deal. Dave managed to find two. Yeah, that's a big two kills from Mac. Now put them in a 3v2 situation as the Exceed is able to line up that kill on towards Sib. It's not false into the hands of Exceed and Arceus to try to clutch up on the round for the Gorillas. The bomb is going to be down towards Keg. Mac is able to at least spot one, get that information, and stay alive. Let's see if we can do with that information. Exceed has managed to make his way just toward the back side of the mountain. So with that in mind, they're going to have to get that bomb soon. Mac eventually earns that dead silence, and from there, we'll see what the play elects to be. Arsenis has got to be careful, Jay. Tagged up from behind. It was exceed to start. It's going to have to be him to end it. A 1v3 position known, and that sniper not able to deliver on a second. Seattle, round one. That's good work right there from Seattle Surge to beat the aggressors. In this early round, because you know there's no trophy systems to work with, so they're going to be playing nice and slow. But Matt takes that positioning towards Kagali. He's able to find the timing to find the first two kills. And then with that bomb beam down, you saw it cause so many problems right there for the Gorillas. To try to pick it back up to get that bomb over towards B. As he got to work that pinch, set up the trap, and eventually take round one. Let's see if Surge can make it too. They head in to see their first attack here on El Asilo Search Destroy. This map was the only Search Destroy map that they did lose in our Major 3 qualifier. So it's not been great lately for them, even though it is a small sample size. When we talk about Search Destroy, a lot of questions on Surge. They win an El Asilo Search Destroy. We can all agree that S&D is back in prime form. Mac again able to deliver with our first being a problem right now for LAG. It's a big kill taking out Joe Deceives as well because now you know there's only has to be one player left in towards the site. It's going to be AD and he finds two. Tries to go for the snap on towards Sid but at least makes it a manable situation. 2v2 now. Oh, this young man is confident. Thankfully, he's got the cover fire from Assault. And so with that, LAG sneak away. They don't find first blood, but now they've evened it. Accuracy but the chance to strike. He so far had a great performance in these first I guess round and a half, and that bomb is going to go down. Assault on one side, exceed on the other. Now time for the retake, Sib eventually found out. Assault able to find it, and now it is all up to the Iceman. A 1v2. Iceman with the 1v2, he puts himself in a great position. He's gonna find the first Ooh. kill. No, he is not, exceed. Cuts him down with the Vaznev. What started off as a great round from the Seattle Surge, finding the first initial two kills. Exceed the playmaker. He did it in map number two. He just did it in that round right there for the Gorillas. Finds three on the round to keep them alive in this search and destroy. Now tied at one. I'll tell you what, man. I know there's been a lot of critiques around this LAG roster, but I feel like I like all of them. I really, I feel like I like all of them. Like we're talking about Joe Deceives, Assault. I know Naval's touch started at the start of the day. It feels like he's playing some of his best COD in a long time. And like we said, the rookies especially exceed in this situation. 
confidence at an all-time high. A wonderful little hat trick there. In terms of the screen, Sid bringing out the sniper on the other side. Exceed, getting that hit marker. Tosses out a nade, says a prayer, and not able to make it land. Aggression will, in fact, be his downfall as Pred is able to find another. 4v2 now for Seattle, LAG. What's the play call? I think Seattle doing a great job of just not giving up that quick bomb plan. That's usually where the Gorillas like to find a lot of success. Second on attacking rounds. Once they get that bomb down with ease, they're putting players in great positions to pick up information and eventually find that first blood. Now Joe is going to invest that dead silence. He's able to take down Mac. So now in a 3v2 situation, still got to work towards his bomb plan. They do indeed. Assault. Has he just made the route? Yes, he has. Another kill found. Accuracy instantly pops dead silence from Pred. Runs right into the site, cuts away Joe Deceives. Bomb does not get planted. And now for Assault, that dead silence is about to run out. His position is about to be known. A 1v2 spot. Can he make the play happen? Coming around the corner. 10 seconds to go. He's got to make a play. Get some hit markers on to Bred. Bred drops him. Seattle, they're second. Just great round right there from the Seattle Surge. Once again, to find that first blood. Once they find the second, so the Gorillas were trying to put the numbers back into their side, but that 2v2 situation, once Assault finds that kill, you saw Exceed, he was trying to work towards that bomb plan, but Pred invested that, that silence, able to take him down, and then just not any time on the clock for Assault to work with. As Seattle are able to take the round so far, this has been back and forth. Three straight first bloods for Surge. Can they make it four in a row? His utility is exchanged and maybe a bit of a test, a bit of a viewpoint over at that B bomb site currently for Mac. He's definitely thinking about it. He's popped dead silence just to get to his position currently. But Exceed so often he goes for the flanks no matter what the map tends to be. He's found himself at a nice little angle. We'll see what he can come away with it, but this is really going to be the fight that we talk about. Joe Deceive sitting in money, ready to open up that door. Nothing yet to strike, but player number two is the guy to look out for. Oh yeah, Exceed, he pops that dead silence. He's able to work his way all the way around round back fight. He's able to get all the information, find the first kill, and at least set up his teammate to find the second. They know the positioning of Sib, you cut him down. Now it's all up to the Iceman in a 1v4. Not gonna invest the dead silence. Because that round just took too long to develop on the side of Seattle Surge. It leaves the opening for Exceed to get all the information that was needed, set up that flank, and eventually put them in the trap as they find all four kills clean. And I'll tie it up at two. Yeah, that's just a wonderful collapse, man. Like, literally, we just see everybody from Seattle fall in just a matter of seconds. Exceed, patient on the flank. Joe deceives. Everybody on track with what the play call was right there. As we said for Joe, didn't really jump into money when he could have. Didn't really feel the pressure to make the play. Gorillas, ready. And had the strat called down. Gorillas will be back on the attack, and this time it could be Pred. He's able to answer early, makes his way through the alley. He's got a plethora of information. Oh. Give him two. Oh! Give him three. Arsene drops, and just like that, round five done. Seattle take the lead. Pred just made that round look easy. The most difficult engagement had to be this second gunfight, but once he finds this in those two, where's the communication right there from the Gorillas? As he just gets the freebie onto Joe Deceives. Basically calls the round by himself as he finds three. Pred now puts himself on a three spree as we go into the later half of this game, but it's been all out defense for both of these squads. Seattle, 3-2. That is the number one KD in Major 3 Search Destroy so far throughout this season. Or so far throughout this split. A 1.8 coming in from Pred. Now sits at 6 and 2. And you can see the bait. Pred trying to throw the shoulder, set up Sib for the shot. Throws out the bullet, but nothing able to land. He's trying to hit a couple wall bangs, trying to do the best 2 real impression. 2 real was able to read their setup, and even with Sib. Being stunned in that situation, he's able to find the first blood onto Exceed. 
Now you know that that's one of the players that likes to get aggressive in towards the site, but you open up a lane for Pred, he finds a second. How about that duo? How about that duo? Joe, meanwhile on the other side, is able to find two. They call it Pred. Understandably so to clean up. And now it is up to Arsenis, the captain of LAG. A 1v2 forum. Bomb planted, a bit of information. What can Alec do here? He has no dead silence. He has no dead silence. He has to read this setup perfectly. He's gonna go for the free fire on towards the back couches. Not able to get any hit markers on towards Pred, but Pred is chasing his kill. He's trying to earn that cruise. He is indeed. Arsenis fires out a few bullets. This kill is gonna be huge. He's gonna find it in a timely manner. Accuracy arrives. Like a superhero swoops in and saves Pred. You could feel it. It felt like there was an opportunity there from Arsene, but Pred stays alive. Accuracy puts in the final shots. Surge already up four rounds to two, but this is how that round started. This is the reason why they had that man count advantage. Yeah, that starts it all off, man. Once he finds that kill with the sniper, you see all of the gorillas starting to rotate over towards B's site, which eventually opens the lane for Pred to find two kills on the round. Seattle are able to take the very first attacking round in this search and destroy. Now up 4-2, but if you are Pred, you know how crucial that cruiser is to complete. Let's just play this nice and slow. Without a doubt, instantly into the office as silence befalls us here on LSC Low Search. LAG especially, knowing how valuable of a round this is. It feels like for Surge, you're playing with house money. You know exactly what the call needs to be, but shout out to the Hot Hands Lounge showing us the amount of dead silence that you have for LAG. I mean, everybody's cooking that up. Exceed able to walk away with the first. Mac tosses out a nade, desperate for information. Sib aggression will end up taking him down. And now for LAG, all members up. That should be a oh, free man. bomb plant, and it doesn't even matter. Bomb does not have to even go down. LAG answer. Yeah, right there, if you're Seattle in that situation, everybody just hold down your positioning. You shouldn't be trying to be the aggressives on that map. You're shutting down that early aggression in towards the A site. You know they're not going for the quick bomb plant, but just hold down your positioning. It shouldn't be Pred just flying in through bottom courtyard, especially on a five spree, when he was one off of earning that crew. So plays right into the hands of the Gorillas wanted him to. So able to find all four kills on the round. Keeps themselves now down 4-3 in this game. And they also shut down that cruise missile progression on the side of Fred. And you can see the strategies in are working. Like we said, four players, at least for the moment, were rocking that dead silence. You could see somebody switch back, but Gorillas had a play call in mind. They're able to make it land there. Arsties will quickly pop his daddy to just make sure he's able to stay alive in a decent spot. But right now for Surge, all eyes on that B-bomb site. Joe deceives. He's been patient not reveal his position too early. As he walks through the door, there is nobody there. Everybody's still looking for info. As right now in Seattle, they could be making the bomb rotation. Yeah, you can see the play call coming in with Pred finding himself in this position. Should be able to work his way on the deep flank and make it an easy rotation over towards A's. That bomb is now gonna get planted. It's time for Pred to strike. He finds that first blood, but that silence is not reset. Exceed makes it a 3v3. This next gunfight is gonna be huge. Exceed. Gonna say, pops that dead silence. Looks to get a move on right now for LAG. Three members to take down a bomb to fuse. That timer continues to run down. Accuracy with the great plays toward the outside. Ends up getting Seattle that much closer to a 5-3 advantage. It's all on to assault, and he gets found out as well. Seattle continuing to fight, continuing to answer. Pred has just been a monster so far in this game 5J. That's just beautiful mid-round adjustments right there from Seattle. They show presence over towards field side. You get a couple plays from the Gorillas to rotate towards that side of the map. Once you do that, you find Pred with that dead silence, able to sneak his way into enemy lines, finds that first flood, frees up that A-bomb plant, and eventually you're able to win the trade battle. So now Seattle put themselves at game point, Pred having a stellar performance in this game five. Two first bloods so far for him. Same thing for Sib and Mac. It's been an all-out team effort in the early stages of this round for Surge. One round is all they need. 
to escape and to see Saturday. Utility tossed as LAG. Wheels are turning. Looking to make the call, trying to just work off of every single bit of information that they can. First blood would be huge. Mac stays alive, holds his irons as LAG begin to make their first look at a play. Yeah, Mac is just holding down his positioning while he's doing that. As he pred on your mini map, he's waiting for his time to strike as the gorilla is going to pop that dead silence. Work up through Cag Alley, able to take down Mac in towards the site. Now the bomb is going to begin planted in the 4v3. That is great work there from the young guns of LAG. Perfect timing. However, Sib ends up dropping assault on the outskirts, and Pred has just found the greatest timing possible. Right on the bomb! Oh. Nearly snaps! Exceed, sweat off his brow, but he's got to get that bomb down quick. Not feeling confident of it. Arshnees gives the call. He wins his fight! Big Daddy Alec! Count me out, why don't you? A crucial double as LAG stay alive. LAG just made the plays, man. You take your time on that attacking round, even with getting first blooded in that situation. Exceed wins a huge one-on-one, -on -one, shuts down the aggression on the side of Pred, and then does not rush that bomb plant because you saw all the players from Seattle tunnel visioning, trying to get him off of that site. Sets up Arsides to find the final two kills on the round. And to round number 10 we go. The Gorillas are staying alive, man. They are indeed. But we see a round 11 for can Seattle call series right here. No surprise, the common strategy for LAG is to put the rookies at the forefront. They're receiving quite a few shots right now, both weak. Oh yeah, they can went wall banged out of those situations, out of those positions that they like to play in towards this site. While wow, that was doing that, look at Pred. Already sneaks his way behind enemy lines again. There was no way. There was surely no way. Oh my goodness. Thompson's out of shot, throws a nade, nothing lands, but Mac able to find the first. Can he make it a second? Into the 3v3 we go. Arsene is able to find one toward the outside, so Pred is wiped away, and from there, how does Seattle look to adapt? Iceman and accuracy, giving Seattle numbers, 3v2, time continues to tick. And Assault is in a great position to at least shut down this push. So he's gonna be the sole player from the Gorillas over towards this B site. He picks up the information onto one, oh. finds that onto accuracy, but they're just gonna get off the bomb, they're not gonna plan it, 3v1 now. Oh, it's all into exceed, it is all on. So the young gun finds his kill and escapes. Now a 1v2. Accuracy toward the top. He's got information. Does he decide to go for the kill onto him? Can he manage to find it? No. Quickly pivots. Goes back into the bomb site. 38 seconds to go. What does he have cooked up? What does he have prepared? Accuracy continues to dance, and it's a beat down. It's a knife. Slicing and dicing, and Seattle survives goes to a game five round 10. But our number one seed stays alive. Oh boy, was that close, Jay. I was not expecting it to be that close, man. If you talk about how both of these squads performed all throughout stage three, it was Seattle Surge coming in with that number one seed. They should have been able to take care of this one with ease, but LAG, they came to play today, man. They were able to tie up the series in the first search and destroy, clutch up in the control. But in the final two maps, Seattle Surge had a little bit more to play with. They clutch up in that game, number five, now turns the tides in that record. They were one and four when he talked about yep. game five. Now that's two and four. They fall short in that first search and destroy, but they bounce back on a map that they did lose all throughout stage three. They make the plays, they make the adjustments, and they're able to clutch up in the search and destroy. I thought the Gorillas put themselves in a great position right there. Yeah. I would have liked to see Exceed in that 2v1 situation commit towards that gunfight versus accuracy and then force it to at least be a 1v1. But once you don't find that kill, right. you get the information on towards Mac, you trap yourself in towards the site. The pitch is going to be on for the Seattle Surge. They clutch up in that game number five and take the series. It makes you wonder too, I mean, if Assault is able to win that long range fight versus accuracy, we're yeah. into a 2v2. One gun fight, oftentimes, is all that it takes. A big W here for Seattle. And I know, Jay, that, you know, from a team aspect and from a player's POV, you're never happy with the loss. But I yeah. think from an outsider standpoint, very happy with what we saw here from LAG. But it just feels like for them, 
probably walking away a little frustrated. Another close loss. Just kind of go back. You got to think, man. The LAG can get back into the very first form of this team where they were good at hard point. One of the best enemies that we had. They could potentially would have taken down Seattle Surge, but they fall short in both of those modes. They get all the way to a game five. Just didn't have enough ice versus the Iceman. And they fall short in that one as well. They do indeed. Seattle Surge able to stay alive despite the best effort being displayed here from the LA Gorillas. That's going to do it for myself and Jay. As we toss it on to the main stage, Bryce, take it away, buddy. Thank you very much. Yes, I'm here with Pred. Uh, congratulations. Obviously, a big win in the first stage of today. But before we talk about how glorious that game was, I want to talk to you about the Seattle Surge roller coaster. Your team is infamous from ups and downs. How is it feeling being a player in that situation? I mean, look, it's obviously very tough. You know, we win the tournament, then we come last. We come second, then we come last. I, I mean, if I had an answer, I would, I mean, I wish <laughs> that couldn't happen. I mean, it, I don't, honestly don't know. It just tends to happen. Um, but we're trying to make a change for that. Uh -huh. We're sick of that roller coaster. We're honestly getting sick of it. Um, so we're hoping to make for that. Awesome. Well, I look forward to seeing it as well. All right, let's talk about the hard points. Uh, you guys look great today, and is this something you've been working on, making sure that it's number one for coming into this tournament? Yeah, for us, you know, we're a very good hard point team, man. We've expanded our map pool, so for us, it's just, you know, making sure that hard point is dominant, which I feel like it is. Um, and yeah, man, I feel like we've really worked hard on our hard point, and it shows. Yeah, it certainly does. It was a great game as well. Uh, let's move, let's jump then, right to that final S&D. Just coming onto the stage, you probably wouldn't have seen this at home, but Fred, you're basically bouncing, walking up into the interview, you're like, just how crazy intense that game was. I want, it, I want it from your perspective of how, especially those final few rounds went. Um, look, we've been putting a lot of hard work in S&D, and for us, it's just to get, like, we, it was good for us to get that map five out the way and start the tournament, because I feel like that's really good to start a tournament. It gets the jitters out the way, you know, so for us, it was really big winning a map five as well, a lot, under a lot of pressure. Um, and, you know, man, that last round, uh, Mac had no ammo for about the whole round. I mean, I was watching his screen, so that's why when we won and he ended up knifing him at the end, I just, for me, I was like mind blown what I was watching, so yeah. Oh, it was certainly entertaining for everyone as well. Uh, coming into this one tournament, you've talked about pressure, right? Number one seed, everybody doesn't know whether you new guys are going to be amazing or not. What are probably the main things as a team you've been focusing on to make sure that it's number one seed all the way? Um, for us, it's, um, you know, the most important thing is uh, just to make sure we stay focused and, um, you know, don't really listen to the outside noise and stuff like that because we know how good we are. Okay. And that's our main thing, man. Awesome. Well, I'm glad to hear it. And congratulations on your win once again. Everybody, give it up for Pred from Seattle Surge. All right. Thank you for joining me. I'm going to send it back up to the main stage. Thank you, brother. Let's break it down. Seattle Surge, they get the job done, although it was a lot closer than I was expecting. Nameless, we started the segment off before the series, right, saying any given day, any given day, right, things can happen. Number one seed versus number eight, LAG. Even though they take the loss, they still got a W in my mind. Yeah, I mean, LAG, they push them all the way to the limit, man. And, and you know, they still got a W in your mind, like you say, but you think if you're in a game five against Seattle Surge and Search and Destroy, where Seattle was once weak, you can capitalize just so many things that they LAG did wrong in that last game, and, and Seattle capitalized on it, right? Like, we saw LAG, they're making these pushes, you know, when they're on defense, getting up and behind them, exceeding Jonas Steve, trying to do what they can, but they have to be actionable, and at times we saw them just sort of waiting and allowing Pred to make that first play, that first strike, right? And Pred has been so good at these first bloods. In the middle of this game, like, the adjustments that were made, it just wasn't enough. Pred was picking them apart. I know we're talking about this game, but this yeah, arena right. is electric right now. Optic Texas is taking the stage, and the crowd is letting them hear it. They got to home turf, home ground, maybe. Last time they won a championship, it was right here. They're looking to do the same, this time with Ghosty. But I, and I think right now it's just Dashy, but when they get up there, baby, it's going to get even louder. Ali, I want to go to you. Fred, I'm a believer. He is oh, yeah. absolutely <laughs> incredible. He was slaying out this final game for Women's Search. I think going 11 and 5. Talk to me about it. It's crazy. I mean, it's just a back and forth talk between who's the best SMG in the game when it comes to Hydra and Fred. You know, when we see two both these players on the map, it is just consistency. All game modes across the board. They're putting up the numbers. That game five to go 11 and 5, 13k damage. He had a 3k for the lead to push them during that round number seven. So for Seattle Surge, I honestly I look at the series and I think it's a good one for them. It almost went the same way as last matchup in that game number five. I got a little bit nervous. I, I got did. nervous yeah. for their search destroy they clutched up in the end and like Fred said I think that was a really good map five for them to win to start off this tournament the only thing I think they need to go back on is that map number two map number two which uh, obviously was that s and 6-3 yeah. mark we were watching that and for me that was a big victory uh, for LAG I really thought the series at that point could turn around for them 
No, no doubt about it. And I think winning that map number three control, right, really sort of put them in the driver's seat and maybe made Seattle fans a little bit nervous. But that Fortress Hardpoint, I mean, that was just Seattle. That was them, right? They were playing at their best. But I think Seattle, you know, winning that game five, search and destroy, right? The S&D struggles last stage, getting that win under their belt. Yeah. And I think it's great momentum because you're going to be playing FaZe or Thieves next. <laughs> and they have to build off that. That is not an easy round whatsoever. Well, let's move into our scuff play of the, ga uh, play of the game. And it's Prez with the swing grounds alley. Walk me through it. It seemed like he was a walking highlight reel. I mean, uh, yeah, throughout this entire series, I mean, it comes down to the game number five, right? This is that 3K I was talking about. He gets behind enemy lines. He gets the information. He snaps onto this second guy and I mean the comms just unfortunately could not come through fast enough when it comes to Joe Deceives and what's so good about Seattle for me right now is the way that their search and destroy is looking I think where they found fault is they have one of the best snipers and best ARs on their team and that's in the likes of Civ and when it comes to search and destroy snipers are so important in this game but it's also difficult to make that choice of like can we right. take off the pressure that Civ adds onto the map and put him on the sniper to counter eyes exceed on the other side do we allow him to keep the tack out and let him try to get up aggressive right. in those front lines? So for me, I think accuracy took on that role, played a lot more aggressive in those maps two and five, and I'm happy to see that when it comes to their search. It was a risk they were willing to take, and it paid off, at least in the end. Seattle search will move forward. LAG, though, they still look strong. I'm sure they're going to be just fine down in the elimination bracket. But let's check out some things we are offering right over here at the CDL. Talking about the CDL shop, you have all to choose from. I was actually walking walk the venue. Hey, we got some fresh stuff out there. They got new hoodies, the full lineup of 2023 jerseys. But on top of that, you want to look good virtually. We got our team packs in game. Look like the pros, play like the pros with the new CDL team packs. Hey, they got it all. Home and away, male and female versions, whatever you need to look fashionable. Nameless, what are you rocking? Listen, man, I switched it up. I uh, was well, rocking the Toronto Ultra. Now I'm rocking the Vegas Legion. Got to support my boy Jim. Joe. Okay. Who, when you run up against the uh, skins, who's the biggest demon? <laughs> the biggest it? demons? Yeah, who, who's dominant? Hmm, I got to think about this, dude. I feel like that these these ones are always a little, a little low key. demons. And then, like, dude, the optic ones, bro, I'm just trying to be trying to be scumped, dude. I'm like, oh, <laughs> got to watch out for those guys. But I love how the, the hoodies look, uh, you know, a lot like the camos in game. I think that's sick. Yeah, that's dope. Well, the arena was already getting loud. I think it's going to get even louder. Coming up next, a series everybody's been waiting for. Boston Breach played against Optic Texas. Don't go anywhere. It's coming up right after this.